Hi everybody. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five main reasons why most professionals hate to sell. Now I started selling when I was five and I'll get more into that during the video, but I learned some fundamentals that removed any of the hesitations that I had around selling and it's now become a big part of my life. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today's a quick video where I want to go through what I've identified as the five top reasons why people don't like to sell. And what I realized after having worked with professionals of all types, they all feel unique and have kind of obstacles they think are unique only to them. But truth be told, most people are challenged with the exact same five things. So let's jump right into number one. The number one reason why people don't like to sell is they don't have a process that they follow. A lot have been thrown into selling, whether they be professional services like accountants, lawyers, insurance people, and so on. And they're expected to come to the table with a whole set of tools. Now, I am not a believer that natural salespeople exist. I think some people might, you know, lean a little more towards extroverted uh, personality where they enjoy talking to people. But I have yet to find even the most crazy introvert that can't learn how to sell following a process. The second reason why most professionals don't like to sell or participate in a selling process is they're not really sure who they're supposed to talk to. One of the things that drives me nuts is people that say, well, the market is everybody. If you say that the market is everybody, what that means is nobody or it means that you're too lazy to actually identify markets that are most suited to what you're offering. We at GoCO call these our niche market targeting, and we believe that all professionals should focus on no more than three. Two is too few, and four is too many. Having three markets that you're focusing on makes it much easier to determine who you should be talking to and who you should be avoiding. The third biggest problem that people have around selling is if they've identified a process that they're going to follow and they've identified a market that they're going to go after, the next challenge that always comes up is what do I say? We like clients to start with answering three basic questions. What do you do? Why does it matter? And who cares? Having these conversations within a niche market you're targeting can really be beneficial in maximizing your time and being able to qualify prospects that will fit best with your solution. The fourth reason why most professionals don't like selling or look forward to selling is they're not sure how to qualify a prospect properly. A lot of people that I talk to talk about the sheer amount of time they waste talking to the wrong people, maybe having more and more conversations with individuals that don't end up becoming business or anything else that feels like they're spinning their tires. When you're qualifying a prospect, you're basically looking for two things. They have means, the money to pay you, and they have need a problem of which you have a solution. Those that have means and need are a qualified prospect and will be very interested in talking with you. But the market is made up of 90% of others and the others are broken into two categories. Those with means and not need, so they have money but they don't have a problem that you can solve. Or they have need and not means. They have a problem that you can solve but they don't have the money to pay you. As soon as you can qualify those with means and need compared to the other two groups, your business development process simplifies and you quit wasting time with prospects that can't or don't want to buy. And the fifth reason why most professionals struggle with selling or don't look forward to it is they don't know how to close. Now there are seminars and books and videos and all of this stuff around different closing techniques. But because I like to keep it simple, what I do is I go through my sales process. I've talked to the markets most likely to buy and to see value in our solution. I know what to say, which is just sharing what we do, why it matters and who cares, educating rather than selling. I'm able to qualify prospects in that small group of people that have money and have need. And then once I've done those four pieces, the last step is to invite them to buy. Remember that if people don't buy what you sell regularly or they have never, what you need to do is walk them through the process. And it can be as simple as, Bill, I've really enjoyed our conversation. I think there's probably a way that we can do great business together. I'd welcome the opportunity to do something with you when you see a fit. Stop. That's a simple way to close 
which will open up a ton of opportunities for you if you follow it. So in closing, what I'm going to encourage you to do, and I'll put links to some of the videos that I've talked about these different topics in the past, but you really need to have a process that you're going to follow consistently. You have to know who you're going to talk to. You have to know what you're going to say to get their attention. You have to be able to qualify them and then simply invite them to buy. And that's not leg humping where, hey, please buy from me or if you buy right now, not 20% off. But instead saying, I really see a fit here. If you do too, I'd welcome the opportunity to do business and leave it at that. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Quick little video just to re kind of reframe the way that you're looking at selling. I don't see sales as closing, leg humping, coercing, doing anything that makes the other person uncomfortable. I see it as educating, letting them know what we do and letting them determine if there's a fit. We don't chase but we will put them in a sales process to move them through the process of not knowing what we do, to knowing what we do, to us qualifying them, to inviting the business. And then if it doesn't go, we move them to purgatory, which I will cover in a later video. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share with any of your colleagues that might be struggling with making sales more complicated than it really is. And remember, gladiators eat first and they learn to not only work within a sales process, but learn to love it. When you love what you're doing and you're educating others on the value, selling happens. See you in the next video.